Okay, so I will start. Uh, I'm just going to pretend nobody has ever seen yarn or hooks before. So let's do that. So I am just for a little talking about yarn. I know there's been a lot of questions. What yarn? Why we're using it? The sizes of yarn. So uh, yarn companies have been have improved so much in the last decade and they are very wonderful. So every yarn with a label will have, okay, let me see, will have your contents, your fiber contents of what it is. So you know exactly what is the yarn is made of. It will also, of course, give you your ounces and grams and your yards and your meters. And they will even give you suggestions. What is the best hook or needle to use with this yarn? So for this is a worsted yarn, it recommends a I or nine hook. So with this one, you can either go up or down one. If you go down one, your weave is gonna be a lot tighter. If you go up to the J hook, it's gonna be a little bit looser, slouchier. So this is why we're recommending you know, yarn labeled yarn if you have it at home. If you're not sure what it is, I wouldn't risk making something for charity. I mean, feel you can definitely use it if you find some great uh, yard sale bargain, a bag of yarn. I mean, it's perfect for any kind of um, home project for yourself. But if you ever want to question the yarn contents, you can just go to your labels like this one. So this is a Kobu. And again, it's gonna give you your ounces and your grams, your yardage. And this one, oh, let me see, sorry, is a cotton and bamboo. This is a lightweight yarn, a size three, and then it gives you your hook recommendations. This is the one um, I've always used for knitted knockers and chemo caps. So that's a nice one, just to bring it in. Uh, so yarn, hooks. I don't think we have to really go much of an explanation for hooks. So I'm using, um, so a couple of ways to hold it. So I want you to take your hook and I want you to put your thumb kind of right there where this indentation is. You just kind of do like a little wiggly motion and see how that feels to you. You can also go back. Some people like to crochet in the very back. See how that feels. I like this. This is my preferred way to hold a hook. Some people do this. I have never figured this out. So, so we're gonna start off slip knot. Okay, so I'm going to have my yarn. I have my tail on the left of the hook. So, sorry. You have your tail, you wrap it around your hook. Okay. And you take the other one. This one goes to the skein of the yarn. And oh, sorry, you're going to wrap it on top. So you have two. Ah, see, there it goes. Teaching, I can't do it. <laughs> and so you have two on your hook. Now you're going to take this bottom loop okay. and you're going to just slip it over the hook and just tighten it and there you have your slip knot okay let me do that again okay tail wrap around other side that goes to your skein. You have your two loops. Take the bottom loop and loop it over your hook and then just pull tight. So in uh, crocheting, we call it chaining. Uh, I think in knitting, you call it cast on, I think. Casting on? Yes. Oh, okay, there you go. So that is correct. Okay. okay. Here's your thread. This is what I do. Grab it with your bottom three. Hook your finger under. 
So, whoop, bottom three, hook your finger under. So this part, and this is going to take practice. This part should be nice and straight, not super tight, but you don't want it slouchy, so it shouldn't hang down. So this is something you cannot teach. Uh, this is something you'll have to practice and what tension works best for you. So again, three under. Now you have your hook, you're going to put your hook under like this and you are just going to pull it through. See, oh my goodness. Every time I teach, right? Pull it through. Under, oh. pull it through. You're just messing up to make us feel better, Melanie. That's of nice. Of course. Here's the uh, professional crochet teacher, you know, can't do the slip knot. <laughs> <laughs> Under, pull through. And I like to move up my fingers up the chain just to keep it kind of nice and even. So just keep chaining, chaining, chaining. And just keep going. So I would like you to do this three times, like do 20 chains or 30, and then unravel it again, down oh, to the slip knot. So I, I'm, and I'm telling you, it seems trivial, but a good foundation chain makes a huge difference when you start off your project. It gives you a nice edge if you have to sew it together. It, it does make a big difference in your, especially your first couple of row stitches. So, okay, grab my yarn, loop my finger under, under, through, under, through. Under, through. And you don't want to pull too tight. You want just kind of, this should move very easily through your loop. Are we supposed to be counting? No, no, just do, uh, I, I, I'm just saying 30, 40, just do a couple, unravel it and do it again and do it about three times. I have a quick question. Yes, please. Instinctively, I keep wanting to go from above instead of under. I don't know why. What would that do if I did that? Uh, so are you going like this? Yeah, yeah, Nothing. like that. It, it's just a preference. Okay. Oh. It's, it's really just, as long as you aren't over, you can do this, you can do this. Oh. The crocheting is a lot about preference right. of the hook and how you want to yarn over. So oh, you can good. do it like this too. What now? The nice thing about this pattern is that we don't actually have to count any chains. So when we actually went to um, master crochet class, one of the beginnings even for us more experienced crocheters was chaining. So don't get frustrated. It gets a lot easier. Just unravel. Yeah. It is actually yeah. proven, scientists have proven that the repetitive chaining and crocheting uh, lowers uh, blood pressure. Half an hour of crocheting lowers your blood pressure by, I think it was like 15 points, I think. All right, let's see if you can see yeah. that. But so you kind of get this like knitted, like uh, braided look. But so this is how my hat starts. Now I posted, I believe I posted it in the, uh, um, what is it called? The uh, event page, just kind of like a nice little measuring chart. What your uh, what the rectangle size is for the uh, different uh, like for baby size for adults, and I can post it again. But I mean, you look at Pinterest or just Google it, you'll find uh, 50, millions of them. <laughs> okay, so I like to measure about. It doesn't have to be exact. Okay, I'm a little big, way big. Okay, but. Let's go about eight inches. I'll take a couple off. Uh, feel free to make it smaller. We can today. You could try four inches, six inches. Oh, this is the great thing about this pattern. Uh, it also makes a scarf or a cowl. So if you right now want to 
make a scarf, you just go how wide you want your scarf to be or how wide you want your cowl to be. It starts all the same. It's just when we stop and finish it, that's the difference. So you actually learn um, three patterns right now. So what are we learning now is called the single crochet stitch. Uh, in, a, in patterns, you will see it mostly abbreviated as SC. Uh, in uh, a lot of patterns online, sometimes come uh, in UK terms. In the UK, it's called a double crochet. So uh, when you check patterns, make sure it's a US terms, because if you have an English one and you crochet in US terms, it's going to come out all wonky. So single cro crochet, SC. Okay, have your chain, right? Okay, so you're gonna look right here. You see this little opening? Oops, so we're going right in here. Yarn over, so you can either grab it this way, grab it this way, yarn over, pull it, and you have two loops on top. Yarn over, pull it through one single crochet. So we're going in the next one. So you can take that upper yarn right here and you go right underneath it. Push through. Pull it through. How did you right. start that? The, uh, your first thing that you did to, to turn the corner. Okay. So this is joy. This is okay. So this is the end of our chain, right? You have your chain. So I'm at the end of my chain. Now I'm working backwards. So here's the, my chain. Okay, here's the last chain I made and I'm going right back in it. Right on top here. Melanie, I have a couple of questions for you. Sure, yes, please. Uh, please. How, how are you recommending to keep the tension in? Practice. <laughs> Honestly, no, it, it, it is really a matter of practice. It's, it's, you have to play with it. There okay. are, you can get some tension rings that never work for me. It is really a matter of practice. I hate to say it. <laughs> no, it's okay. No, it's good advice. So yes, no. she is absolutely right. There is no way you're going to do this right if you don't practice. Okay, so what you don't have to count the chains for this hat. There's a measuring chart. Uh, a newborn hat, you want to go make it about five inches long. An adult hat, between eight and 10 inches, depending how slouchy you want it. So I have about eight inches, I think. Okay, so I'm going back to my stitches. Someone said so I have, hear me. I have the top one here. Let's make sure I'm in there. The lefty. I'm going in. That may be better. I'm Grab my yarn, yarn over again, pull through. So I'm moving back down. I need to see the turn itself and which stitch you actually go into. I keep missing that somehow. Okay, so let me, okay. So do you see those two stitches, the top and the bottom? Yep. So I'm gonna go in between those two. Oh, okay. So I have the one on top. Grab and pull it through. Grab again and pull through. You have something, you know, when you have your chains, you have something that looks like a braid. So you have those two. Mm -hmm. And then you want to go right in between. So you have the one on top and you have the other one under it. Pull your yarn through and yarn over and pull through again. So I'm going back in, Melanie, grab my yarn. Yes. Um, this is Lisa McArdle. I was looking at your guide chart yes. and it said for adult, the rectangle is 20 inches wide by eight and a half inches long. Does yes. that mean we're supposed to do a chain 20 inches long or eight and a half inches long? The uh, you want to chain it, it, it the, uh, the larger number is going to be your head circumference. Okay. So we are actually chaining uh, the height of the hat. Sorry, I should have said that. So we Got are it. chaining the height of the hat. Okay, so if we want to do an adult, so, we want to do eight and yes. a half inches. Yes. Okay, go back in, grab my yarn, 
yarn over. There, go in my stitch, grab the yarn, pull it with me. Then I have the two loops on top, yarn over and pull through again. And these are the two rows I crochet the slowest because it gives you a nice base and it makes everything so much easier, whatever you crochet on top. So, okay, so I have some gauge swatches here. When in doubt, so this is the same yarn, but I use two different hooks. Gosh. Wish my iPad. So this was done with an H. So it's a kind of like a tight weave. And then this was done with a J hook. So yes, when in doubt, make yourself a little square or a little rectangle and see how you like it. If it's too big, you don't like it, you want something a little bit tighter, go down a hook. What's your advice for this particular hat? Uh, I use a, a, I love my J hook. I, I use the worsted size four weight with a J hook. You know, baby hats that usually have a size three yarn, I use an H size eight hook. Yeah, but when in doubt, make a little swatch. And you know, that's great when you find some amazing looking yarn. Like I love finding yarn at, uh, yarn at yard sales, but you don't know what it is. Uh, make a little swatch. Wash it, dry it, and see how it comes out. Mm. If you made a 10 inch swatch and ends up being two inches, it was probably wool. <laughs> if, if mine looks like this, what did I do wrong? Looks like a corkscrew. Well, you, you learned a corkscrew. How great is that? What, did you <laughs> use a single crochet? Did you double up your yarn? No, a single crochet, but is, is my cast on stitches too tight? Is that why? It, the tension. So either I would say your yarn is too bulky or your needle is too. <laughs> I think what she did is she didn't crochet in the right um, in the right uh, loop every time. That's how she's getting the square. That's how you make a ringlet. Yeah. And I mean, mine does curl a little bit tight. Too. This feels tight here and that's yeah. the chain. Okay. This is loose down here. Okay. So yeah. So you're chain was just a bit tight yeah so next time make it a, make it a little looser but you made a beautiful little screw does anybody else want to show your stuff that you've done yeah make me feel better <laughs> a little green worm better. why don't you why don't you guys do that because we can tell hey. you what what you might have done that you might try next Time when you rip it out or something. Okay, well, Kent, Kent wants to show you so you all can feel a lot better. <laughs> Here, well. All right, well, blow him up. There. Hey, Beautiful, Ken. Yeah, that's not bad. In. Woo. Oh, it's pretty. We're doing a good job. It's a little bumpy, lumpy, but it's better than the other side, I think. first one, that's awesome. Thank yeah, you. Oh, it looks good. Somewhere in heaven, my grandmother is chuckling, I know. She, I, she gave up on me a long time ago. <laughs> so you're gonna go right. Okay, let me see and see. Pull it up. So are we yeah, going back? Right. Why are you gonna go, go right, right into, into the first one? Okay, right okay. I'm going in the first one. Okay. Okay, I'm under wrap it. Wrap your yarn. Wrap my yarn. Pull it through. Pull it through both holes. Okay. Yes. So you have two loops on your hook then. Yeah. Okay. Got that. Okay, wait, hold on. Maybe I'm confused. Yeah, no, no worries, no worries. Okay. okay. So I, Are you I the have first two day? loops on my. I have. I have. Well, I have two loops on here now. You have two loops on your hook. Yeah, I have two loops on my hook. Like this. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Then you grab, wrap my your yarn. yarn again, and go through. Okay. And go through. And so yes. now I have one. Now I have one on there. Now you have one. So now you're gonna look for that next. Oh, I, I get what you're doing. Right there. Grab it. OK. 
Okay, go. Going in. So the rest of the time, it's always going to be getting pulled through two. Once yes. You pull, yeah. Yes. Once you pulled up your second loop, you grab your yarn again and go through both. So if you are at the end okay. of your chain, you should have something that looks like this. You are at the end. Are you with me here? Yes. Back. Okay. Here is one of the biggest, most important, never, whoops, never forget steps. Chain one. If not, you will end up with a triangle. Oh. And I've done it so many times. Okay, so you, you have your loop and you just chain one. Okay. Okay. And then, okay, so just really easy. Just turn your turn it around. Oh. Yeah. Yep. So chain one. Never forget, never forget chain one. And oh. then just bloop, just turn it over. Okay. Okay. And then you are going right in this hole right here under your stitch. You see your stitches on top. And then you if you stretch it out, you see these little holes. Mm -hmm. You're gonna go right into this one, and you do the same thing. Pull your Are you yarn. Going two loops, two whole, two pieces now, of yarn. Yes. Now we'll okay. So now you're gonna see. Let me see. You see your stitches. Your chain is now on top. Yes. Right there, and then on the side of it, you're gonna go through both. So you have them. Got it. So you have them both on top now. Grab your yarn, pull it through, grab again, single crochet. So you're going to go right in there. Go right in here. Oops, I'm moving. Where am I? Oh. And this is pretty much what you will repeat until you reached the length you want. So you will repeat round three until you're at the end, whatever you want to make. Okay, I'm back at my end. Same thing. Repeat after me, chain one. Never Day forget. One. Okay, flip it, just flip it over right there. And we're going right in here. Okay. Love you. Bye. <laughs> Not you, ladies. I was my daughter. Sorry. <laughs> Where so is just to confirm, after the first row, we go through both of the top two. Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, I promise you will probably frog it a couple of times in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I'm gonna frog it. All you you can end up with a bunch of ugly washcloths, but hey, that's perfect. Well, if you make a mistake, repeat it every three rows and call it a pattern. There you go. <laughs> well, why don't you hold it up and we'll see what it I what you what did. I, I clearly did something. I don't know what I did. Okay. I don't know what I did. Before I keep going, I go on. It's like it's getting Oh wait, it's getting like, like I think I maybe did. I could maybe I did it double going up or something. What? 
put it up higher again, Tiffany. Yeah. You're doing fine. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's fine. That. That's you just practice it. Just take it out. Yes. Practice more. Okay. Now no, that's fine. It seems to be going off. okay. This row is going okay, but then all of a sudden it looks like it's getting really like I think I might have done the same spot like four times or something. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, you probably yeah. You know where to put the knee. The hook is the hardest hole. part. Yeah. I this is this yarn was a huge mistake for a beginner. It's harder. Yes, it's hard. It, it is easier if you have a light colored yarn yeah. and a one color or if you like a darker yarn, uh, a one colored yarn, a solid. Don't buy black. No, never, black. never start with black. No. Or navy oh. blue. Girl, a few rows, you get starting. You can start a pattern to develop. So. Another yeah. one I'm testing is the uh, um, Bernat Bundle Up, which is a baby yarn, but it's super soft too. Yeah, it's so really, really it's well. It's really and nice. So I'm making a little swatch and I'm yeah. gonna <laughs> throw it in every wash and drying cycle and see how it looks after 10 times. So what the goal is to have something like this in the end. Beautiful. We're aiming for something rectangular. I wish I could zoom out. I don't know what this that is. That so is awesome, cool. Melanie. What is that? Oh, this will be your hat or a, a teeny tiny scarf. <laughs> this is what you're going for at the end. This is what we're going for today. Okay, who wants to learn an, another stitch? Okay, let me get to that stitch. So we are at the end. All right. Okay, yarn over, Ch uh, chain one. I'm sorry, chain one, turn. So just pretend we didn't do the other stitches on the bottom. Okay. This is called a half double crochet, which is my favorite stitch and Sue's favorite stitch. It is this exactly the same as a single crochet, except we're going to yarn over first. Okay. Grab your yarn. You have two loops and then you just do what you did earlier. You pull your yarn through. So now you're going to have three loops on your yarn on your hook. Pull through, right there. Okay, grab your yarn, yarn over, and then just do the same as you did with your single crochet. Oh. Yarn over, put your hook through, grab your yarn, three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through. So the only thing you're doing different than from single crochet is you're going to yarn over first. That's all. That's the only difference. And to just keep going, follow. This one I can actually do faster than the single crochet for some reason. I don't know why. Mm. Me too. So yarn over. Bring your yarn to the front. Three loops, pull through. Will that make a bigger piece faster? Uh, yes, so it's gonna give you a, a bigger gauge. So I'm gonna show you exactly the difference. Let me grab my other, I made swatches for today. So, okay, Look at you here's go. my other swatch. Okay, so here is your single crochet swatch, right? Okay, it's very tight. You can't really look through it. And then this is your half double crochet swatch. What I love about it, going back and forth, you're gonna get this rip texture on a hat where this is flat. Um, not that it's not pretty, but it's just flat texture. This one, you get kind of this ripped look, but you can see it's a little bit, see? Should I say Swiss cheeses? No, well, it has bigger holes in it. So it's this it's like one Havarti. is- like there you go. <laughs> I have a question. Of course. In the end of the row. Yes. Do you chain one or two for the half chain one? Half double? Chain one. Chain one. Always chain one. Yes. For for our project right now, it's chain one. Yes. And 
if someone's piece has a little bit of a curl, does that mean they're crocheting too tight? Yes. Or the yarn is too big for the needle or the needle or the hook is too small for the yarn. But in this case, I would say your probably your tension is a little tight. Relax, just loosen up. <laughs> Wiggle your fingers. So yeah, the half double crochet is also a great stitch for blankets and scarves because it, it still has a nice tight weave has a little bit more texture than the single crochet, but it it's not too texture. loose to look kind of wonky. Then if you keep going, if you have like a, a use a double crochet stitch, which makes it a lot looser. Mm -hmm. I can show you, let me show you a double crochet though. Because it's not that much harder. Okay, so double crochet, you yarn over. No, oh, what am I doing? I'm going for the triple, no, okay double crochet, yarn over, pull up your loops. Now, instead of going through all three, you go through, oh, sorry, you go through two yarns, two, and then you go through your last one. So you get this little like triangle thing. So you go through, yarn over, pull up your loop, three loops on the hook, pull your yarn through two of the loops and loops you with the, another two and then pull through those two. Now, when I make hats, sometimes I, I use it for summer hats. I just, in my opinion, a half, a double crochet hat doesn't hold its shape that nicely for a longer time. And it's and it's got a lot of holes in it. Yes, exactly. So let me do two rows and see the difference of it. Uh, I have two questions. Yes, please. Uh, what do you recommend using cotton yarn for not counting dishcloths? Oh, not counting dishcloths, okay. Um, uh, amigurumi toys. Choice. The uh, tiny tentacles. Yep. The uh, the the little octopus for the uh, NICUs. Uh, cotton depends on the cotton. You can do knitted knitted knockers and the chemo caps in cotton. Uh, what else do I do cotton for? Um, you know, I mostly I use it for kids' toys and things like that. Uh, yeah. And some of those projects you mentioned are, are <coughs> projects that we are vetting right now. So we will have some cotton yarn projects coming on board. So yes. So it, here's your difference. Kind it's of not much fun. It's not hard, but your has a lot, a lot more holes in it. It's great for summer items, but not my preferred one. Your goal eventually is to have something like this. So at this point, you can make it this into a scarf, you can make it in a cowl. So you can make so many things at this point just with this one stitch that you learned. Um, but your goal is to have a rectangle and the sizes are posted online. So this, I made mine, this is, I think was a three toddler size. So cut, let me finish my end off. So I used to have double crochet for this one last night, just because I wanted to get it done quick. But like I said, I like that ripped effect. Okay. Okay. We are at the end of our rectangle. So there's two ways to finish it off. Uh, you can finish it off with a needle which is okay, but then you have to guesstimate how long of a tail you need. And I like to finish it off in crochet because I think it gives us such a beautiful little edge and something special. Okay, we have to, here's my hook. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, sorry. So we are going to fold in half and line up our edges. Everybody see this? <clears throat> okay. Okay. 
I have my hook. So now just pretend you are on one row. Go in, but go through both layers. So you wanna have both, oops, sorry. You wanna have both layers on your hook. Just do a single crochet. Okay. Go through both layers of your hat, of your rectangle. And just single crochet it through. I think if you do it with a darning needle, it just, I don't know. I don't like the look of it, even if you turn it inside out. And I think this makes it so much sturdier. So go through both layers. Oops. Let's see. So you are through both layers and just do a single crochet. It makes a very decorative edge too. Also, you can easily tell what is the back of the hat, which sometimes I need, my kids need. Because then, see, your edge will look like this. It'll have like a, almost a kind of like a knitted look edge instead of just something that is uh, you know sewn together seamed I don't, I don't well, however you say it in sewing I don't know <laughs> oh there we go let me finish that off did everybody get that you want me to start that over again show it again from the beginning those who want to finish it off. I got it, but I don't know about everybody else. <laughs> well, let me go back again. Finish. So, all right, you have, we are at the end of our rectangle. I'm going to fold it together and tip it on its side. So I'm um, this way now. I get myself situated, get my, so line up my two edges. And then I just pretend I'm doing a single crochet row, but I'm going to go through both layers. And just do the single crochet. Go back. Make sure I'm through both layers. And that's where a nice even foundation uh, chain comes in because it'll be easier to find the matching holes on each side. Both layers pull in and single crochet up. And it makes it a lot sturdier than darning it up with a needle. That has been my experience. Oh, you know, if you can chain six inches and keep going back and forth, you'll have a scarf. So don't even need to do a hat if you don't want to. So here, if I'm at the last one. And at the last one, I kind of just make sure I have both the edges lined up. Single crochet. And to finish, but you would just cut your yarn and just pull it all the way out. That's kind of how it looks. Let me show you really quick uh, the next step. So once you have your side seamed up, you cut your yarn and just pull, pull, pull until it's out of your hook. So now ideally you would pick a tail long enough to uh, cinch up your hat on top. You don't have to, you can, if you're short, just uh, sew it in and then just get another big thread and go around your hat can i ask and i you, believe I you do that a lot in sewing wait, wait so wait, cinching to... should be pretty easy for most of you 
I made it a poster. How much I'm sorry? Yarn did, how much yarn did you leave when you ended? Uh, uh, you know, I didn't measure it. I kind of just you imagine going Roughly. around, going around twice your hat. Double if you can go around twice on That's the outside helpful. of your hat. That's helpful. Thank you. Yeah. That's a good estimate. You said. Yeah. So the, yes. So better too long than too short. But I, I go about twice the circumference. Okay. So now you just okay. You go in right here and you go around each post, like around each stitch. It doesn't have to be super accurate if your stitches are not that even or if you have a dark yarn. You just kind of want to kind of go in out in out in i know what is that called in sewing isn't there something you do gathering stitch or something i don't know that's running stitch that's running, running stitch oh there you go you want to do a running stitch there you go thank you <laughs> okay so kind of in out kind of look where the bigger holes are and just kind of go around doesn't matter where but you want it evenly and close to the top and you can see it's already starting to get, oops, sorry, starting to gather up here. So in, out, in, out. You kind of just weave your way through your hat. In, out, in, out. Out and out. In, out, in, out. And just do it until you come back to your beginning somewhere near. You don't want to go over your first running stitch. So kind of until you're back at your seam. And then Okay, two ways to finish it. I'll show you the easy beginner one. Just pull. If you add a pom-pom, it doesn't really matter anyways how it looks on top. So just pull it closed and then secure your yarn and you have a little hat. Here's the way I do it. <laughs> I know I have to complicate everything, right? Okay, drop your needle. Once, once you're back to the, where you can cinch, right? Drop your needle in the middle, push all your yarn in, turn upside down, inside out, inside out, sorry, inside out. And then gather. This way, if it's not so pretty, it's on the inside, okay. And then secure it. Now what I do is I just kind of, I just kind of go over it a little bit, like, you know, maybe across and I just secure it a little bit. There we go. There we go. Just a couple of little stitches. Okay. Just and once in a while, turn it around and check. See how you, if you like the top of it. If you're like, oh, I don't like this bulge here, go back inside and gather a little bit more of that. But nobody really sees it. I'm just really, really weird and picky about it. So don't judge about it. So you can do it like that. And out, crisscross. I might overdo the sewing. I just, I just want it to last as long as possible. So I probably put a lot more stitches in than necessary, but. I think you're doing the best you, you should do. I'm, like, I, I'm all for durability. Yes, absolutely. And there you have your little hat. You can turn off the little, you can of course turn on the 
Turn around the little brim. <laughs> I didn't sew in my, okay, I didn't uh, hide my yarn. So once you secure it, uh, kind of weave in your yarn. I mean, sorry, forgot that. So uh, you never want to knot yarn. You never want to make a knot. Yarn needs to stretch. Uh, a knot will only make it more likely to rip. So this is what we learned in teacher class. So weaving in, you want to do four changes of direction. So one, to the left end is two, down would be three, and then my fourth direction change could be either way. I'm gonna go back up left row, like I'm gonna go to northwest and then trim it, but don't knot it. And there you go. If you wear a little hat. Yeah, we got a really good looking hat. They're so comfy. They're so cute. Hey, you know, this, so um, especially if you use a half double crochet, the rip texture makes it a preferred uh, men's hat because it has kind of like a nice masculine look in a gray. So, here we go. 